I have happy memories of this city. Circumstance once turned a family trip to Vienna into a precious solo excursion with my eldest son. As we explored the city's past and present together, he taught me to look at cities in an entirely different way. The things that I walked right by, the machinery of a modern city that is so easy to dismiss as purely functional, he viewed with curiosity and question. He turned my attention away from the ubiquitous gleam of Vienna and toward the glue that holds the city together. And in our own ways, we were both captivated by Vienna, whose charm and attraction is undiminished even when the sky is gray and the wind blows relentlessly. Vienna is served by Vienna International Airport, funnily enough, which is located just outside of the city. This is a modern, efficient, well-connected airport, although weirdly, only Austrian airlines fly from the US to Vienna, so bear that in mind. But no matter where you're coming from or how you get here, this is a low frustration airport, a rare treat. Savor it. Despite being just out of town, getting from the airport into Vienna itself is no stress. There are two train options, the Railjet and the S-Bahn. The Railjet runs directly from the airport to Vienna Hauptbahnhof every 30 minutes for four euros 20. Depending on where in Vienna you're headed, the S7 line of the S-Bahn might be a better bet. It runs from the airport to Vienna Mitte station. Oh, and avoid the overly expensive city airport train. Triple the cost without much tangible benefit. The airport station itself is below arrivals where you can buy a ticket for either rail service from a machine or manned kiosk. And because we are in the heart of Europe where traveling by train is a joy and not like slamming your hand in a car door over and over again, <laughs> you could very well be arriving in Vienna by train. And if you do that, you'll almost certainly arrive here, Vienna Hauptbahnhof. And from here, you can connect to the city's excellent public transport options with ease. And it really is excellent with trains, commuter trains, trams, undergrounds, and buses to get you to every corner of this most livable of cities. And while those are all excellent options, you're most likely going to gravitate towards the underground, which can get you within walking distance of pretty much anywhere you need to go. The Vienna Underground has the highest per capita ridership in the world, a strong endorsement in this ultra-efficient city. Like a lot of other cities, it uses a zone ticketing system, but rather wonderfully, the entirety of Vienna proper is all included in Zone 1, which means you can use one ticket across multiple forms of transport to get you to your destination, making life much easier. As with so many European cities, you must validate your ticket before you start your journey. So right as you come onto the metro platform, the bus or the tram or the underground, you've got to stamp your ticket. There's no turnstiles to go through or anything like that, but there are frequent spot checks and the fine for not having a validated ticket is upwards of 100 euros. Plus the humiliation of being a fair dodging butthole. So there's that too, think about that. I said, look, it even says, please validate, right there. There's no excuses, people. You can buy your ticket from a ticket machine in a train or underground station. These machines accept most credit cards as well as cash. You can also buy 24, 48, and 72 hour transit passes from these machines, but do the math to see if you'll be traveling enough to justify the cost. You can also buy tickets using the excellent Rihanna mobile app, which supports Apple Pay as well. Uber is available in the city and rides are plentiful. There are various levels of service to choose from to get you wherever you need to go. European rival Free Now, formerly My Taxi, is also widely available. A walk around Vienna's Nachtmarkt will prove there's no shortage of quality ingredients in this city. But for me, the culinary joys of Vienna are best found in the city's hundreds of cafes. In so many cities in the world, there are iconic dishes that are maybe a little bit over-egged and oversold and just a little bit touristy. 
Wiener schnitzel in Vienna is not one of those things. It really is a must. And it's one of those things where it's, it's okay to come to a traditional cafe and, and order Wiener schnitzel. In fact, that's the way that, that I would recommend doing it. It's really simple. It's a flattened piece of veal. It's a veal cutlet that's breaded and then deep fried. That's it. There's very few accoutrements or faff. You get a little bit of cranberry sauce and some, a slice of lemon to squeeze over it if that's your jam. It really is one of those things you have to experience. So come to a traditional cafe, order the Wiener Schnitzel and enjoy. One note of caution, it's about the size of a baby, so bear that in mind when you order it. Uh, the portion sizes in Austria and especially in Vienna are much more generous than their, their neighbors here in Europe, so bear that in mind. You're not going to go hungry in Vienna. This comfort food. How often do you get to participate in intangible cultural heritage where you live? I'm guessing not very often, but here we are. In 2015, that is exactly what UNESCO designated Viennese coffeehouse culture. Why? Not just because it's been part of Viennese society for hundreds of years, but because there's social protocol, there's ritual, there's elegance. And unlike pretty much every other coffee culture in the world, in Vienna, you are encouraged to linger in a coffee house. You are encouraged to take one of the local or international newspapers and read it at your leisure. Stay, take a coffee, read, write, socialize, and at no point in a Viennese coffee house will you ever be asked to, quote, move it or lose it. Indeed, Austrian writer Stefan Zweig described the Viennese coffee house as a, quote, sort of democratic club, open to everyone for the price of a cheap cup of coffee where every guest can sit for hours with this little offering to talk, write, play cards, receive post, and above all, consume an unlimited number of newspapers and journals. What's not to love about that? One of the other wonderful things about Viennese coffee houses is they are some of the best places in the country to find great examples of typical Austrian baking, which is wonderful in and of itself. You'll always be able to find the classics, but each coffee house will make its own and have a slightly different take on, on classics like the apple strudel, which is my personal favorite. Don't go to a fast and easy bakery. Come to a coffee house, get one that's drowning in vanilla cream, take your time and savor it because this is very difficult to find outside of Vienna. Oh my God. That's so good. Night falls in Vienna, and there's one culinary conquest left to complete. Worst. You can find worst all over Germany and Austria, but there's a particular twist in Vienna I think that that's worth exploring. While you can get the traditional Frankfurter, as it's known here in Vienna, one of the more popular variations is the Bosner, which is two smaller, thinner sausages ketchup, mustard, onions, and curry powder. So you're getting that kind of hint of a Berlin curry verse, but also with the, the fresh raw onions as well. And the nice thing about places like this, this these worst stands that are all over Vienna, is they're open till like four o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. So if you've been out to the clubs or the bars and you're, you're peckish, this is gonna hit the spot. They're like three euros each, it's great value. I'm literally drooling, I cannot speak, so I'm going to eat it. I think this is my absolute favorite, my favorite version of, of the traditional Wurst. Maybe the Berlin Curry Wurst, but this is such a great twist on it, I absolutely love it. Vienna is part of Austria, and Austria uses the Euro, so that is what you will be using while you are here. Now, Unlike many of its European capital friends, there is still a heavy reliance on cash here, or not using cash is slightly irritating to many of the waiters and waitresses here, as we've discovered in a few times that we've been here. You can pay by card, but you'll get an exasperated sigh when you make the request, so have some cash on you, because not only in restaurants is it preferred in many instances, but when you go into uh, food markets, smaller bars, it's the only way to pay, so have some notes on you. There are ATMs everywhere, of course, this is a modern city. Is it an expensive city? No, it's not really. It's not cheap, it's not expensive. There's nothing that you're gonna experience, food, drink, uh, transport that will make you, ah, damn, that is expensive. It, it, it seems like a very reasonable place to exist. And on that note, let's do the rundown. 
cup of beautiful Viennese coffee will cost you around three euros. A glass of beautiful Austrian beer will cost you around three euros. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you're going to pay three euros and 80 cents, or about four dollars and 20 cents U.S. Vienna is one of those cities that, just on the surface, is immensely satisfying. Polished, storied, elegant, Vienna's draw is immediate and obvious. But with so many of the world's greatest cities, it's not just the packaging that makes Vienna so appealing. Look closer, and a charming, patinated side of the city reveals itself. A blend of traditional Viennese anachronism, multi-generational immigrant influence, and modern European efficiencies percolate beneath the surface of the world's most livable city. It's a rare treat to be in a city where one person's experience and perception can be vastly different from every other visitor. Vienna is, quite literally, the choose-your-own-adventure of cities.